What it do, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Access to Combat Podcast, episode 77. Today we're going to be breaking down UFC 309 and some boxing brought to you by Netflix, question mark? Yep. <laughs> As always, it's your boy Ray Ray Boogie, Rayo from the AO, my co-host. Who with a boss, who got next? You already know. And before we get into any of that business, you guys already know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe, follow Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hey, everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. First fight on the card at women's flyweight, we have Veronica Hardy going one-on-one with Eduarda Mora. Veronica Hardy, 9-4-1, fighting out of England, repping Venezuela, 29 years old. Aranda Mora, 10 and 1, fighting at Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 30 years old. I'll start on the Mora side. She uh, trains in the same camp as Jelton Almeida. Debuted at strawweight, has missed weight twice since then. Now she's making her flyweight debut against Veronica Hardy, who is currently riding a three-fight winning streak. Mora, I mean, like I said, she trains on the Jelton, so you know what she wants to do. She wants to take you down. She wants to beat you up possibly look for a sub veronica hardy since she's come back off her i think it was like a three-year layoff again three fight winning streak good striker uh much improved since she's uh been back overall even though the you know the quality of opponents been okay i think more early and i think veronica late yeah if you like the mora side i think rounds one and two are probably your best bets she's finished practically all of her fights Mostly by sub. She does get some ground and pound. I don't think she's going to do that against Hardy here. Hardy, I like her late. She's got the cardio edge. Definitely got the striking edge. She's got the speed advantage. Also, don't think Mora is going to have the same physical physicality advantage. Correct. That she, you know, she, she's she been fighting girls that are like 5-1, 5-2 leading up to Veronica here. Now it's somebody a little more on her level. I like Hardy, third round decision, Mora. First, second round. If I got to pick a side, I I guess it's going to be the Mora side. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little up in the air about this one. Yeah, and rightfully so, by the way. I think this fight is exactly how you described it. This thing has split decision written all over it. This is a fight that I don't have too much interest in betting in just because there's too many variables. Veronica is way better than Honda Feet, though. Um, I know Veronica can defend herself on the floor, but Eduarda is a little better than her on the floor, I would say. And I think she's still going to have some physicality advantages because Veronica is not necessarily the biggest flyweight. But she has been powerlifting, putting on the weight. She's committed now to a camp with Dan. And Hardy before these three fight win streaks she was essentially just traveling the world going to different gyms and training now she's locked down to one camp with one centralized trainer with one centralized game plan I'm gonna lean Hardy not with a high degree of of confidence at all I like taking Hardy typically at dog money Mora does have a path to victory here because Hardy does like to play off her back a little bit that that's what alarms me and scares me off of her definitely scares me a bit but if Hardy were to if I could trust Hardy to stop the takedowns and just work to stand up and just execute the striking, I would pick her all day in this fight. And I think that's going to be somewhat of the plan. I think she's not a low IQ fighter. I think she's going to know. She might get taken down maybe first round, even second round. But I think halfway into the second, even third, she's going to be able to mitigate a tired Mora from who's going to, you know, essentially try to spam her and then gas out. Because Mora has no gas. She's uh, she's a gas bag. If she's not getting you out of there in the first two rounds, she's going to have trouble in that late second third round getting you out of there give me veronica hardy but not with a high degree of confidence and i'm going to go by decision next fight on the card at men's welterweight we have the welsh gangster oban elliot going one-on-one with the habibi basil hafez elliot 11 and 2 overall fighting out of wales hailing from wales 26 years old hafez is nine and nine four and one uh fighting out of pennsylvania 32 years old i'm leaning the welsh gangster here i'm gonna lean oban here because I think he's got the better striking, the cleaner striking. He does. The better counter striking. I think he's a little more patient. His first fight in the UFC, he put on a grappling dis- display, I guess, you, if you want to call that, against uh, Val, uh, uh, what's his name? Val Byrne? Val? Woodburn. Woodburn. Yeah. Which sounds like a porn star name, by the way. But <laughs> And then in his last fight against Preston Parsons, showed defense and showed uh, decent striking, in my opinion. Hafez debuted against... Uh, that Jack Della. Three, three name Jack. Yep. Jack Della. Mandanella. Mandanella. He hits hard, but the striking isn't as clean, in my opinion. 
he also kind of wants to counter strike, but I think I think Elliot's kind of got him here in that department. Correct. Give me Elliot here. I'm probably gonna say by decision. I don't I don't really know. I don't know if I see a a finish here because Hafez has got a he's got a chin. So yeah, give me Elliot by decision. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think I think it's gonna be a decision for Elliot. I seen Hafez take shots from. J- three named Jack, Jack Della Mandanella. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, you you know, <laughs> I can I can never get his last name right. Um, but he was able to withstand some of the best. Some of the best punches from one of the best boxers at welterweight, probably in the UFC as well. Stood up, tough guy. Loves to implement his physicality to get to his wrestling and his grappling. Decent power, decent everything. I think he's a little live in this fight, but if you're asking me who I'm leaning, I think it's Oban. I think Oban's a cleaner puncher. I think Oban can catch him walking in, hurt him a few times, drop him. Has the better footwork, can hang with the grappling with him. All those Welsh and Wales, people from Wales all know how to grapple at a pretty elite level. I was going to say, people from Wales, that, that wrestling is underrated. Wrestling and jiu-jitsu. It's a little like, underrated. It's pretty filthy. So I, I'm going to lean the guy with the better skills. But don't be surprised if I make a play on Hafez later in the week. But I, I don't know if I'm going to get there. He's one of my lower confident dogs on this card. So give me Oban Elliott by decision or knockout, but probably by decision. But Oban is definitely a lean in this fight. Next fight on the card, at men's welterweight, we have Mickey Gall going one-on-one with Rahimis. Ramiz Brahima. Gall, 7-6 and six overall, fighting out of uh, Greenbrook, New Jersey, 32 years old. Brahima, 10-5 and five overall, fighting out of the Bronx, New York, mm. 31 years old. Now, just seeing that, I didn't realize my man was for the Bronx, but... <sighs> Makes me want to low-key root for him. (laughs) All we're rooting for him, for sure. Now, unfortunately, I do think this is the fight I'm least looking forward to on this card. I think this fight is going to stink. It stinks. I mean, Brahimas, I think Brahimas is the better wrestler. The issue with Brahimas is a little low volume, and he can be out-grappled, for sure. Now, does he have to worry about that against Mickey Gall? I don't think so. I think Mickey Gall is going to want to try to keep this fight standing. Mickey Gall is probably going to win. The striking exchanges just because he's going to throw more. But I think I trust Brahimaz's chin more. Also, I think Brahimaz, if he does take Mickey Gall down, can control Mickey Gall. Mickey Gall does have more UFC experience. I mean, essentially his whole career has been in the UFC. I'm going to lean Brahimaz here. I hope to I hope to see more evolution from Brahimaz because I do think he's got what it takes. But he's got to beat Mickey Gall here, in my opinion. In terms of a bet, fight ends in sub. From both guys, because I think I think there's going to be a lot of grappling. Not a bad look. Give me Brahimaz by sub or decision. Yeah, I, this fight, this is 1-800-GAMBLERS if you're betting on this fight. Because <laughs> it's so hard. Like, the thing is, it can go to decision or can get finished. This is one of those fights that you're supposed to stay away from. I hate talking about the fight like this because I'm not even a, a, a big... I'm not a not a big fan of Mickey Gall or I I I, I don't I think don't hate either guy. To I be don't honest. hate either guy, man. But stylistically, this fight just stinks, and it stinks because not only from just how boring it could be, but it also stinks on how hard it is to cap. They can both sub each other. I, I mean, yeah, I don't I, know. I, I might I might like fight Mickey Gall's sub. like jujitsu a little better. Yeah, but the way Brahimaz, if he gets you down, he's he's gonna try to get to your back. Yeah, I like fight ends and sub in this fight. Yeah, that's the that's where I'm at. But I, not with a high degree of confidence. I, mm-hmm. I got to see where the lines are. I got to see if it looks juicy. It's a coin flip, in my opinion. I'll lean Brahimaz just because he's from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm at. But it, do it, kid. Do it. Yeah. It, Actually, I'll leave Mickey Gall because I think he's got the better UFC experience. Oh, he's from Jersey. And he's got the better striking. I think he can hang on him on the floor. It's just late in this fight, he's probably going to fucking gas and then he's going to get stopped. Like, it's just, it's it's a hard fight to bet. I'm going to lean Mickey, but man, don't don't listen to me. I'm after, I'll lean, you see how this one's saying? I'm back and forth. <laughs> I'm going to lean Brahima just because he's from the Bronx. <laughs> I'm dead ass. That's where I'm at. I mean, the line is like 115, 105. Yeah. Minus 151. It's essentially a pick em, So I, I'm off this. I'm going to lean Brahima, but not with a high degree of confidence. BX, baby. Next fight on the card at men's heavyweight, we have Marcin Taibura going one on one with. Johanta Denise Tybora, 25 and 9, fighting out of Poland, repping Poland, 39 years old. Denise, perfect, 8 and 0, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil. How old is he? 33 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Lowish level heavyweight fight, maybe not. This is a step up of Denise. Tybora 
has only really lost to decent guys, especially lately. Uh, tested veteran, more well, more well-rounded, especially in the heavyweight division than you know you're used to seeing. That's where the trouble presents itself for Denise. I mean, listen, he got taken down by Austin Lane. <laughs> Just saying, he should have been taken down by Carl Williams. Yeah, we think that he, was. I mean, he actually was taken down by Carl Williams, but so but late in the fight that it didn't matter. It didn't matter, and, and honestly, it's there's a lot of uh, politics we can get into in regards to why we think Carl Williams didn't go directly to his wrestling in that fight. So. But that's nothing. That's not to take anything away from Denise. Uh, you know, decorated kickboxer. He's fought like I don't know if he beat Rico Van Hooven, but he's fought Rico Van Hooven. He's got a decent kickboxing resume. Mm -hmm. Good striker. Hits hard. His only way to win here is to knock out Tybura. Well, maybe not. If if it goes the distance, he probably has the striking edge. I could see him winning a decision here. But I think he either knocks out Tybura or Tybura takes him down and beats him up from there. Barry so, Man, Barry Manilow. And then when you go striker <laughs> versus grappler, you know, you gotta you gotta cue the Barry Manilow, gotta cue that that jailhouse rock. I'm gonna <laughs> lean Tybura here for the win. This is a prove it spot for Denise. But give me Tybura. He's gonna take him down. And I think he does he sub him? Maybe? Probably not. I think ground and pound. I can see Tybura ground and pound victory here. I agree. I agree with you 100%. I think this is one of the easier fights in the card to call. It's just whether or not you expect Tybura to go after it immediately. I think he will, to be frank. Or he'll get his striking and then he'll feel a mind be like, all right, I can't fuck around with this guy. He's a decently iq fighter. He's just not beating the elite heavyweights. So you have to ask yourself, is Denise, does Denise have the skills to compete with the elite heavyweights the, can he beat or can he even or is he not even going to be able to beat like a, a Tybora and a Spivak and Spivak is a way worse matchup for him Spivak it, it, it's it's jailhouse rock all day with that dude <laughs> Tybora has the grappling upside here and I have to lean him on that just on principle and I know Denise is kind of just a turtle on his back give me give me Tybora here by but I would say but I would almost say ITD I think he probably stops him if he gets on top of him it's it's, it's curtain to my opinion so give me Tybora ITD but yeah Tybora for sure is the guy I'm leaning for this fight next fight on the card at men's lightweight we have a 10 Jim fucking Miller going one-on-one -on -one with Damon the leech Jackson Miller 37 and 18 fighting out of Jersey 41 years old Damon Jackson fighting out of Dallas, Texas, 23, seven and one overall, 36 years old. So we got battle of the old battle of the vets here. <laughs> Initially, when I looked at this fight, I, I, I'm kind of, I was kind of leaning Jim Miller. Now, I think it just depends on how the fight decides to play itself out. I'm going to, I'm going to lean Dame Jackson here to win as my pick. And it's only because I think if he takes Jim Miller down, which I don't think is that hard to do. It's a combination of having a hard time getting up and maybe just playing a little too much off his back. And Damon Jackson wants his, you know, I don't think he's going to want to st strike with Jim Miller. No. He, uh, he's not going to want to. So I got Dame Jackson at least maybe securing one or two rounds, the early rounds in particular, surviving the third, winning a decision. If you like the Jim Miller side, he's got to survive the grappling early. I like Jim Miller by knockout because Dame Jackson's chin is a little sus. And I do like, J like if you like Jim Miller, a, p a particular prop, I'm kind of like thinking about. Third round for Jim Miller. That's exactly how it played this fight. But I'm going to lean Dame Jackson here. I think his if he stays safe, stays away from Jim's hands, goes straight to the grappling like he wants to, I think he can bank some rounds and he's just got to survive that third. I'm taking Jackson probably by decision. Won't be surprised if Jim Miller lamps him though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Jim here. And I'm on Jim for a couple of reasons. Um, I, he's a dog too. The line, the line looks appropriate. I think it's a dog or pass by cleanly, to be frank. All your points about Dame Jackson are Walter Goggins are accurate. <laughs> I just think that Jim is the more complete fighter. He has the better striking. I think he has the more opportunistic grappling. He has the experience, you know, and I, I, I don't think Dame Jackson's wrestling's that good. I think he'll sell out for the takedown and probably gas himself out. And the thing is, Dame Jackson exhausted. I could just see him walking into a guillotine. He does. He does this. Like, oh. he, he's a guy who likes to grapple, but when he gets grappled into or someone's guillotining his ass, like, I think it's, I just feel like he's going to play right into what Jim wants. And he's a better striker. So even if it stays on the feet, he's going to lamp him. Dame Jackson doesn't have a great chin. Jim still has a great chin. And you've seen it from that beating he took from Bobby Green. Yeah, he took a beating from Bobby. Bro. How is he going to come back from that, too? That's from a little shaky. But he's taking an... Well, actually, not really an adequate amount of time. 
because UFC 300 was this year. So. Yeah, it was not that long ago. But I just don't see Dame Jackson presenting any kind of real threat to him on the feet. I no, just don't. No, not at all. I think if this fight stays standing, it's Jim. Jim will probably get the knockout. It's it's a, it's inevitable. If you can't take him down, yeah, he's getting a knockout. Yeah, dog or pass, I'm on Jim. That's how I'm at for this fight. The line is close. It's another pick em fight and another particular angle, as you were talking about. This might be another sneaky uh, fight ends and sub. Fight ends and sub. Kinda, yeah. I kind of like that. I'm okay with that, too. 100%. Next fight on the card at men's bantamweight, we have the Dragon. Jonathan Martinez going one-on-one with the Maniac, Marcus McGee. I'm not gonna lie; these the nicknames are kind of like straight out of like uh, if you're doing if you're playing like WWE like 2K24 and you're like I need a nickname for my creator wrestler here. <laughs> I'm stuck between the Dragon and the Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> what do I pick? <laughs> Martinez, uh, 19 and five overall, fighting out of Plainview, Texas, 30 years old. Marcus McGee fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, nine and one overall, 34 years old. Now, this fight is a fight I'm particularly looking forward to. It might be low-key, the low-key fight of the night. Low-key. I think it's going to be a banger. Two guys who can strike. Two guys who are kind of well-rounded. I think I'm going to be leaning the upset here. I don't know if McGee's the dog, but I'm going to be leaning McGee here. Only because I get it. He's been, since he's been here, he's a little older. He's only been facing guys who are, you know, not the cream of the crop. But... You can't blame him for, you know, you only you can only face the guys that they're putting in front of you. Correct. And what he's doing with those guys is packing them up. Correct. Jonathan Martinez, though, high IQ fighter, good striker, very good leg kicks. That's going to be probably a key issue or key point in how McGee kind of deals with that. But McGee's boxing, great. Sharp. And I kind of see this fight playing out a little bit like the Davy Grant fight that Martinez had which is Martinez's only knockout, by the way. Davy Grant, second round, right hook to the body, left hook to the face, put him on his ass, finished him. I think McKee's boxing is better. Also, yeah. McKee, not afraid of mixing the grappling. Don't think he'll have success taking Jonathan Martinez down. I see a lot of control time, a lot of pushing on both ends, cage pushing. I have a hard time believing Jonathan Martinez is going to be able to move this boy around, though. Yeah. As easy as he does everybody else. I'm sorry. Like, I think McGee is... Card from stone, man. And taking nothing away from Jonathan Martinez. I mean, he just he's coming off a fight against Jose Aldo where he put up an admirable fight. Yeah. You know, some people didn't like the fact that he was, you know, pushing Aldo or Aldo. And you can't really do nothing else with Aldo. You don't want to stand with Aldo. Yeah. I'm I'm picking McGee here for the upset. I think I think maybe McGee knockout is probably nice. ITD. But I think it's probably decision. I think it's gonna be a crazy 15 minute fight. Prop wise, I'm probably gonna play the knockout, but I think McGee. By decision is the way I'm leaning. Yeah, I'm there too. I, I think I just think McGee is the goods. I think he's having a hard time getting fights because people don't want to sign the paper to fight this guy. He's relatively unknown still, but he's dangerous. He's yes. very dangerous. And Martinez coming off of a Jose Aldo fight, you know this is probably like the last guy that he actually wanted to fight. I mean, I don't think these fighters are afraid of anybody. No, not at all. I, I don't say that, but, you know, like, how is he going to get up for this after fighting Jose Aldo? And then Aldo was able to land effective boxing shots down the pipe. I think McGee's going to have the same success, and I think he might actually close the show on him. Because I think McGee's a little younger, just as explosive, and probably hits harder than Aldo, which is crazy. So, for me, you're throwing those light kicks, you stay in the center line a lot, you're going to get lamped. And I feel like this is one of those situations where Jonathan Martinez, he's not going to be able to cage push as much as he wants. And if he does not get his light kicks going, he does not have a game plan. Like, that just, that's just been the formula on him. If you can mitigate his light kicks by checking them and or just getting out of the way of them and then co- effectively counterboxing or returning a kick... He kind of doesn't know what he's doing out there. I'm just going to put it out there. Not, not taking anything away from his striking, but... Oh, not at all. I mean, him, he's got two leg kick stoppages yeah, in the UFC. Him and Chris Gutierrez are kind of wired the same way. Like, a if, bit, they, if yeah. they can't get the leg kicks going, they just don't know how to find range with their boxing. I do think Martinez, is a, it's a little... He's a little more he's higher better. IQ, though. He's better. Yeah, because he's, better. Uh, he's he'll, he'll be willing to make those adjustments that Gutierrez wouldn't make. I agree. So... Yeah, and plus, I think he has better takedown defense. Yes. Gutierrez's takedown defense is hot dog shit. <laughs> so, you know, give, give me give me McGee, because I think he's just 
gonna be able to land something down the pipe and i think he is the, the stronger guy the more hungry guy in this division i think he's the guy that there's more unknowns which is a good thing like martinez i kind of know what his healing is at this point especially after the aldo fight and i feel like mcgee can blast through that give me mcgee by knockout or decision here next fight on the card at men's middleweight we have the all-american chris wyman going one-on-one -on -one with your boy eric anders Weidman, 16 and 7, fighting out of uh, New York, 40 years old. Eric Anders, your boy, 16 and 8. Terrible name. <laughs> I kind of like it, actually. Terrible. <laughs> fighting out of Alabama, uh, I said 16 and 8 already, 37 years old. Unfortunately, I don't, on paper, this fight looks a little exciting. I don't think it's going to be that exciting. I think I'm going to be picking Chris Weidman here to win. I know he's the older guy, but he's by far the more experienced guy and he's a dog in this fight which is insane and i get why because he's you know he's a little older he's coming off the, that the crazy leg surgery he's been has been fighting the, the the greatest uh level of competition since he's been back but he's been winning i mean by hook or by crook you know by eye poke or by low blow or whatever <laughs> my man is getting wins you know what i'm saying <laughs> i don't approve of the method but you know if you ain't cheating you ain't trying at the end of the day Eric Anders, I mean, listen, I think, does he have the power to lamp Weidman? Yes. Does he have the wrestling to mitigate Weidman? Probably not. I, I would give Weidman the grappling and the wrestling edge uh, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And I, I just trust Weidman's cardio more. You know, if I knew Eric could go three hard rounds without gassing, you know, I might favor him a little more. But I, I think Chris, this is another fight where they're going to try to get Chris Weidman home. A hometown win in MSG. Might retire here. Might retire. I don't know. He's been talking like he don't want to retire, unfortunately. But I think he should. Yeah. But I think he gets a win here against Eric Anders. Eric Anders' only path to victory, in my opinion, is just to lamp him. It's possible. But I think Wyman, does he finish? I don't know. But I, I just think at dog money, he's just playable straight. And Because I feel like this fight can also go a whole bunch of ways. He's at plus 140, which I think is insane. He's fighting a guy that got dropped, that got, that got dropped by J.B. Pickett. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when I see that... Yeah. It's and just, I, I, I it's like just, Eric Anders, man. I do. I like him a lot. Yeah. It's just his wrestling defense, not that great. His striking is okay. Has decent power, like you said. Can, he can drop Weidman for sure. But this guy fought Brad Tavares, who leg kicked his leg to hell in his first fight back after snapping his leg. And was able to still make it to the decision to fight partly because of brendan tavares but then his next fight he fought um what's homeboy's name bruno silva and he i poked his way to victory there which <laughs> in jersey i'll say that but what <laughs> i will tell you not not to sound crazy i think we're gonna get a new wyman post usada i'm just gonna i'm just gonna call it like it is because he looked different for the Bruno Silva fight relative to the Tavares fight. He's been getting into shape, man. Yeah, that's all. I need to work out. Like I that. need to see his doctors. <laughs> that's all. Like, you know, and. He's nutritionist, brother. He's nutritionist. And it's know? in New York. <laughs> Dana White wants him to retire low key. I feel like they're kind of giving him a layup fight here. I wouldn't say it's a layup, but it's definitely uh, an easier. This is a big step down sure. in competition. Yeah. It is. Because if you ask me if, like, who's going to win between Bruno Silva and Eric Anders, I'd probably say Bruno Silva. But I just, I just, I just see too many paths to victory for Weidman here. I think, I think there is a chance Weidman can outstrike him. I really believe that, because he's not the bigger puncher, but he puts his punches together more, and he knows how to create openings to land damage on you. Plus, I think he's the better wrestler. I think there's a Weidman, there's a Weidman spot. I think there's dogger pass, and I think he's very live. He's one of the the bit the the more. I'm actually surprised at the line, but right now. He's one of the more live dogs that I like for this fight, this card in general. So give me Chris Wyman. Don't know how, just playing the money line. Give me Wyman at plus 140. It looks like, if, even if it gets lower, if it gets a plus even 120, he's still playable in my opinion. Give me Wyman. Next fight on the card at men's lightweight, we have one shot. Mauricio Rufi going one-on-one -on -one with Goku. <laughs> James Lantop. Rufi or Ruffy. I, I, I still don't know how to pronounce this man's name. 10 and 1 overall, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 28 years old. Lon Top, 14 and 4 overall, fighting out of Peru, hailing from Peru, 25 years old. Easy breakdown. Rufy by Rufy, Ruffy. Mauricio, one shot, probably by one shot, however he wants. Lon Top, listen, he's tough. Tough as hell. He can strike. Yep. It's going to be a fun striking match for as long as it lasts. I mean, is there a shot he lamps Rufy? Maybe. I don't see it. I But these. 
these uh what fighting these nerds, fighting nerds some bad boys man and i i think we're, we're gonna find we're gonna find out that mauricio is uh he's a problem i i, I just think on top is just not on his level no i think he lamps him i mean we're gonna he's gonna test that peruvian chin for sure does he last to the second round it's probably the bigger question Correct. I mean, he's tough he's a tough dude but give me roofie by ko what do you got? Yeah, I'm not going to add much on to this. I, I think it's roughly by however he wants. He has that very Conor McGregor stance where he stands wide, very karate style, but he knows how to use his boxing in there. And if he's training with the fighting nerds, there's no way he can't grapple. Don't be surprised if he takes him down and subs him. I'm definitely going to be looking at that prop. If it's juicy, I will be playing it. That's a good call. And I just feel like um, Ruffy's just way better than this guy, man. I, I was not high on Lontop. I stood off of him for his de debut fight in the UFC where he was like a minus 600 favorite. I mean, that was against Chris Padilla, right? Yeah, and he, and he lost that fight. Yep, it was Padilla. I, I, I should have bet Padilla because I knew that was past the victory for Padilla. And this fight, now there's, in my opinion, it's it's like the WWE pay-per-view no way out there's no way out for long top in this fight but outside outside of a body bag or 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 with one of his limbs ripped off get the body bag i'm serious i, I think this is an execution this is this is this is fight is set up for ruffy to have a highlight let's just put it what this is called what it is give me ruffy itd but we'll we'll let you guys know how we're gonna play it when the the props drop and find value plays for you but ruffy by however he wants Next fight on the card at men's middleweight, we have Bo Nickel fighting the Bear Jew, Paul Craig. <laughs> Bo Nickel, perfect, 6-0, fighting out of Pennsylvania, 28 years old. Paul Craig, 17-8-1, fighting out of Scotland, repping Scotland, 36 years old. Finally, a step up for Bo Nickel. I think this fight maybe can get to the second round. I also think Bo Nickel is the side here. I think Bo Nickel might get his first knockout. Knockout. Only, only because, I mean, Paul Craig, no chin. Nothing to take away from Paul Craig. I love Paul Craig. One of the only guys to submit Uncle Live, by the way. Submitted Jamal Hill. Submitted, broke Jamal Hill's arm. Yeah. I mean, wicked on the ground. I think Bo Nickel, though, his wrestling should be able to mitigate a lot of the jujitsu And the takedown uh, attacks. And I think he gets a ground and pound finish, in my opinion, here. Actually, no, maybe not. Maybe he might he just, just lamp him maybe on the just feet. Just lamps just him on the feet. Just keep him up. Yeah. I, 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 that's one thing. I don't think Bo's going to want to go to the floor with this guy. And I don't think Bo's striking is like... Uh, I don't think it's um, terrible. I don't think it's good, but I don't think it's terrible. No, he, he, sh hits, he hits very hard, though. He looks like he hits hard. We're going to find out uh, in this particular fight. But I think, yeah, I think Bo, by knockout, is probably how this goes. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I just I just think uh, Bo is a very high fight IQ kid. Graduated from Penn State. Understands his limitations. Literally was saying that he wants like two fights from unranked opponents before he even jumps into the top 15. Very, very smart guy. Yeah. Like, I don't think he, he understands where his level's at. He was super disappointed with his Cody Brundage performance, which I don't think he should have been. I think Cody is just, like, uh, it was just a step up for him. And he still got him out of there, which yeah, is still, hilarious. So it's like, up, he yeah. just didn't want, he didn't back him up in the first round. I think this fight can get to the second round, but I just have a hard time because Paul Craig does not move his head. I think Bo knows not to go to the floor with this guy. I think he can if he needs to. I think if he needed to, but I think he, he will. I, I think he's going to work to stand up. And probably would feel confident on the ground as well. So Yeah, the thing is, I just feel like... You just don't want to go into the guy's realm. Because yeah. I think the only way Paul wins is by sub. Correct. And so. Paul Craig is a 205 or moving on to 85. Yes, he so is. he's a big 85-er. a huge man. I, I don't know if he's... I don't know if he... He should play those games. I don't think he's going to want to play those games. I think Paul, Bo is going to be confident that he can beat him up on the feet. Paul does not move his fucking head. Give me Bo Nickel by knockout here, but we'll see how the fight, what it comes down to with the props and when everything drops, how the lines shake out before we give you any decisive bets for this fight. But give me Bo. Bo by knockout. Next fight on the card at women's strawweight, we have the killer, Karine Silva, going one-on-one -on -one with Vivi. Viviana Ruja. Silva. 18 and 4 overall, fine out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 30 years old. Arujo, 12 and 6, fine out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 37 years old. I think there's a very good, uh, decently high level women's fight. I mean, they got it pretty up. They got it pretty high up on the main card here. I think it's competitive early, but unfortunately, as the fight goes on, I think Arujo is gonna, you know, slow down a bit. She is 37, which is very old for this particular division and very old for just a woman fighter in general i think karine silva is 
uh, got a bright future ahead of her. I think Karini Silva finishes her ITD, probably second or third round. Pretty simple breakdown. I like Karini Silva here. She's tough. I think she's going to be able to take Adarujao's uh, barrage early. She might even force Adarujao to overextend, maybe burn herself out a bit. And I think she just takes over. Give me a, give me Karini Silva here to win. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I just think that um, Karine is going to be able to get her back, especially as the fight gets deeper. I feel like she's going to be able to mitigate a lot of the barrage early, like you mentioned, and just wear down Arujao and then be able to get Arujao's back and and or just control her with the wrestling and hold on the floor. She's going to be the bigger girl. She's going to have some issues. I mean, Amanda Hibas was able to take her down and, and have success taking her down as well as hitting her on the feet. Karina is a complete fighter though, man. She can strike, uh, but her best work is on the floor. But I just, I don't trust Viviana's age. I don't trust the dimensions here. She's going to be smaller then uh karine i also think that arujao's gas tank is big questions the only question i have about karine is maybe her gas late but i feel like her technique on the floor is so good and her ability just to control you is so good i gotta lean uh karine by decision here i think i think karine is gonna get it done and i i don't think she's gonna sub her i think it's probably by decision that's that's why we lean i was gonna say i got one interesting stat guess how many people Aruja has beaten under the age of 30. none one Montella de Rosa, and that was in 2020. Might have a little bit of a padded record, man. I'm going to say padded. Yeah, but, but I, I would say so. Like, at the UFC level, padded. Like, I, I just feel like, you know. I mean, she beat Maya. She beat Andrea Lee. Arguably. You know, yeah, true. Yeah, because I that fight was true. kind of como mienda. <laughs> <laughs> a, like, bit, a bit. I'm just saying. Next fight on the card, and it's currently constituted the co-main event of the evening at Men's Lightweight, a five-rounder. We have Charles Dubronx Oliveira going one-on-one -on -one with Michael... Iron Chandler. Iron Michael Chandler. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming they got the iron in front of the Michael, right? Yeah, Instead yeah. of in the middle. We're covering two iron mics this weekend. Two yeah. iron mics. Oliveira do Bronx. Not the Bronx, but 34 and 10. Fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 35 years old. Iron Mike Chandler, 23 and 8. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, 38 years old. This is a run back. And if you remember, Charles Oliveira won that fight. Yeah. I'm going to be chicken. I'm going to be chicken. You hear me? I'm going to be picking for the chicken. Charles Oliveira. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, you know, Charlie O, Charlie Olives, as the uh, the kids like to call him, he's kind of a good fighter, man, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. I mean, nothing against Michael Chandler, also a great fighter, one of the best to come out of Bellator. That being said, I don't hate the dog shot on Michael Chandler either. Mm -hmm. Michael Chandler, I mean, has been training. He's been in training camp for about two years. <laughs> just waiting for a fight against a fight a fighter that's never going to come back, in my opinion. Now that I keep thinking about it, Conor McGregor is never to come back to the UFC. Yep. If he does, he's probably going to fight TRT Cerrone again. <laughs> <laughs> just to get a win and then bounce mm -hmm. and take care of bare knuckle. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think Charles Oliveira wins again. I think he's just got underrated striking. I mean, he, the striking is what got... Chandler into trouble in the first place and then you don't want to fuck with Oliveira on the ground at all ever but Chandler you know at plus 200 in terms of a betting perspective I mean he is the better wrestler he can grapple he can grapple he can grapple he can, man he can try to control Olive this 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 he's is, got the power yeah to, to, to I mean to lamp him this is a fight that's gonna look a lot that could look a lot like the Justin Gaethje fight but with a guy who's not gonna be afraid to go to the floor with Charles He's the only guy I've seen that Charles has taken their back and he didn't get subbed, you know? And he actually invited it because yeah. he's fucking crazy. But I, I just feel like I, I'm going to lean Charles as well just because of the fight IQ. Yes. I think Charles... And the thing is, it's not a three-round fight. If it was a three-round fight, I'd be way more inclined to put money on Michael. I just feel like Charles is going to either find his chin or find his back, win minutes, and or sub and or knock him out. You're giving them five rounds to figure out how to sub your ass? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You better get him out first. You yeah. better get him out before he figures you out. But I, I, to your point, I want to see how much more this line moves up for Michael. Because if it gets up to like plus 300, I'll play the shit out of it. Because oh, yeah. Michael can definitely control this guy in the wrestling. And from 100%. A, from a narrative standpoint, I mean, this guy, Michael Chandler wants to win. Yeah. He wants to win. He like one of his goals is literally gold. Get the belt. He wants the belt. He's capable. 
And he's more than capable. Yeah. Only issue with him is his chin's a little questionable. He's been in a lot of wars over the years. He sat out for two years. He, you know, who knows how much more he's diminished. Yeah. Physically, he looked great, but your chin goes overnight, man. And sometimes if you're not using it and you lose it kind of thing, you know? So, you know, this is Charles' fight to lose. Mm -hmm. It really is. I agree. And I feel like there's a high clip that Charles either gets his back or catches him with a, a straight shot down the pipe. That's where I'm at with this fight. And I, I'm a lean Charles, Charles ITD. But if this line gets disrespect for a Michael, I put half a unit on like plus 300 if it gets there. There's no question. You know, even plus 250, it's inviting. It I, is. I like, I think if it gets to 250, which I got a weird feeling it might get to 250. Yeah. I don't mind putting like a half unit shot My, on, Mike, on Chandler. Mike won the first fight of that, the first round of that fight. You know, and the thing is, he looked really good getting out of the corner. They didn't look gassed. He just got caught with a good shot from Charles to start round two, and then Charles was able to stop him. But that fight, you could argue in round one to an extent that Michael almost stopped him. This fight's great on all levels. And, and like I said, it's going to be a it's Michael's like a mixture of Dustin Poirier and Gaethje because he's better than po Poirier with, with, with the back takes, and he's just better as a grappler overall than Gaethje. I, I, think, I think Michael... Let's see how Michael's talking this week, and we'll see what we do, but... The lean, the lean, and probably the bet's going to be Charles ITD. Next fight, and it's currently constituted the main event of the evening for the UFC Heavyweight Championship at Heavyweight. We have John Bones Jones going one on one with Stipe Miocic. The returning, both this fight, these fighters both returning. Both returning, both about time. This fight has been five years too late. I mean, five years too late, and it feels like it's been 10 years in the making. It's yeah. been, it's been, this, this fight, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it stinks. John Jones, 27 and 1, the champion. Fighting at Albuquerque, New Mexico, 37 years old. Stipe Miocic, the challenger, 10, no, 20 and 4. Fighting out of Independence, Ohio, 42 years old. So the, the I seen something funny on Twitter the other day. Like the poster for it, I'm looking at it right now. It says two time, it says two division champion. Most championship fight wins, most lightweight title defenses. That's on the uh, John Jones side, right? And on the steep A side, you know, two time heavyweight champion, most heavyweight title fight KOs, most heavyweight title defenses. Now I seen a poster that was accidentally posted on Twitter the other day. And, uh, it might be how a lot of people kind of feel about this fight. The poster that was posted by TNT sports UFC and was, uh, promptly deleted <laughs> on the John Jones side, two years of inactivity. <laughs> Most days without a title defense will not fight Aspinall. <laughs> On the steep A side, four years of inactivity. <laughs> most days without retire. Wait, most days without fighting before a title shot. Also, will not fight Aspinall. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, yeah. and that pretty much sums up the way I kind of feel about this fight. Yeah, this is. John Jones by whatever he wants, in my opinion. I think and nothing against Stipe. I'm not calling him whack. I'm not calling him. He won a great. He's one of the greatest fighters ever. He's just old, man. Arguably one of the greatest heavyweights, right? Old and inactive. He's just old and inactive. And I seen him walking around and he looks hurt. Yeah. You know? He's 42 years old. This is John Jones. I think it's John Jones by sub. I would say sub. And I'm gonna say sub. Because I think John Jones is going to take mercy on Stipe's soul. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a respect, there's, yeah, a there's a lot of respect. There's a lot of respect. There's a lot of respect here. I think it may be second round sub, third round sub. I don't think it's going to be early. Maybe even decision. I can see John Jones just having a fucking <laughs> sparring match with fucking Stipe. Stipe is not going to treat it like a sparring match because Stipe, you know. Yeah, he's a savage. What better way for Stipe than to put a, put a blemish? On John Jones's record, even though he's John, John Jones has got one loss, you know he's been trying to fight that loss. Yeah, it was a bull. It was bullshit though. It was total bullshit. He wants it off. Yeah, but Stipe, a feather in his fucking cap, if he could sleep, John Jones beat John Jones, retire a champion because I don't think he's gonna fight after this. I don't think either guy fires uh, fights after this. I agree with you. I think this is a double retirement, double KO. <laughs> John Jones just wants one win in heavyweight to say he defended. The heavyweight title, and I think he rides off into the sunset. But give me John Jones here. Hopefully, in a fight that I I hope is not as boring as I anticipated it to be. Give me John Jones for the win. Probably by sub. Hopefully not by decision. 
Yeah, I'm there too. And I, I'm going to talk more about, because I, I don't disagree with any of the points you said. This card entirely, and it's a New York card, by the way, guys. It's an MSG. I'm not excited about it. And I'm not excited about it simply because there's a lot of, the, the card is not as good as the previous one. I'm glad we went to the one last year because that card was fucking stacked. Yes. Stacked. This card, not stacked. Main card, watered down. It's just the main and co-main, really, that are like great fights. And there's just not a lot of excitement for this fight because it's two guys, one that's literally like old. This fight, when Stipe was 38, was way more interesting. 100%. I, don't get me wrong. Do I think John is gonna get him down as easy as he got Cyril Gaon down? No, no, no I don't. No. I think because I don't think John is as good of a wrestler as, as, as DC. DC's a much better wrestler than DC uh, than John. Yeah, he knows how to attack the single leg better. Works to the body lock. Works to the high crotch. John too, but not as effectively as as DC. I think DC. DC style, I've been saying it for a while, translates to heavyweight better than John's. John's not the best open mat wrestler. He's just not. He's never been. There's a good chance he could hurt Stipe to the body here. I don't see him catching Stipe with a head kick because that's the only way, in my opinion, that he knocks Stipe out in this fight. Yeah, I, 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 that's, the only, that's the only way I think he knocks out Stipe. I mean, I don't know. The thing is, Stipe, again, he's just washed, he, Joe. He, he, he walks around like he's hurting. He's why, and, and it sucks to see, and that sucks to say about Stipe, because you know. Yeah, the re the real champion in this division is Tom Aspinall. No, the, real, the real champion is Francis, but yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, the lineal champion. That's the fight I would fucking love to see. Uh, yeah. Francis and Tom. Oh my, because I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I just genuinely don't know who's gonna win that fight. But if you're asking me, like, I just feel like this is a hard fight to bet, regardless, because you have. I wonder what the over under is. And I was I had a laugh with you about this. Yeah. What is this fight to end by injury? I want to know. <laughs> I want to know because one guy's gonna catch a leg kick, probably go down. The other guy is one guy's forty two years old. If he catches a leg kick, probably gonna go down. The other guy just came off a fucking torn pec, which is a very serious fucking injury. Yeah, it's a rough injury to recover from. I mean, dude. Dude, and and John looks like he's in fantastic shape for this fight. I'm not doubting that. That's why he's the obvious lean here. I think he's probably going to get this done inside the distance. But I, I just don't see how you can bet Stipe at all. He's inactive. He's old. He's probably going to be the slower guy in there. Pro probably is. Yeah. Stipe, this fight might take a place a lot on the feet because I think John might have some resistance to the takedown. Stipe is a little stronger now. He has put on some size since the second Francis fight because he kind of knew like, okay, I got to bulk up for these bigger heavyweights. John Jones is probably going to be able to use the body kick. Maybe, he, I think it's a club and sub probably. Probably hurts him to the body, drops him, then goes for a sub, mauls him. I, I just, it, it's however John Jones wants, yeah. in my opinion. stipe has got the better boxing here. That's about it. And But the thing is, John's got a good chin and John's going to know how to use, he's probably going to keep him at kicking range the whole fight. Yes. He leaned out for this fight by the way. He put, he took a lot of that fat off. I think he wanted to put on the weight against Cyril cuz he wanted to muscle him down to the floor and get him out early. This fight I think he knows he's going to have to stand his back foot a little bit and manage distance and be light on his feet and try to get around Stipe's guard and try to hurt him to the body and hurt him to the head. You know, but if you're asking me it's it's ITD. John Jones whatever he wants. I don't think this fight goes off 5. Um, I think there's going to be an accumulation of damage or a sub by John. And that's, that's that, to be frank. I just, yeah, like I said, this fight, just like this card, watered down, the, probably the least exciting MSG card they've put together since they started coming to New York. Give me John Jones by ITD. And that does it for UFC 309, taking place in MSG. But we also have a Netflix, Netflix card headlined by Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. And it's happening the day before on Friday in Arlington, Texas. Now, there's a couple of fights on this card that pretty good. And I'll, I, you know, throw it over to my brother, a.k.a. the boxing expert, a.k.a. the sweet science aficionado himself, Hugo. Hugo, <laughs> take it away, my brother. Yeah, we had a couple of fights to talk about on this card um, that I want to talk about on this card. One of them is Bruce Carrington versus Dana Coolwell. Um, Bruce Carrington's coming off of one of his most challenging fights against a guy that I thought he probably should have stopped because he's super susceptible to the body. Coolwell's also susceptible to the body, but I feel like Coolwell is a little bit more of a technical, technical boxing guy versus uh, Bruce Carrington's last opponent. Sagawa. Sagawa is more of an explosive in and out puncher. Kuo knows how to manage distance. 
He knows how to mitigate damage. I feel like Shushu should be able to put damage on him, but I feel like this is also like somewhat in the same level of competition as Sagawa. Coolwell has a fight, two losses. His last loss was to Lucas. Well, Lucis rather, and the Lucis. I watched that fight back, and you could make a strong argument. Coolwell won that fight, and it was against a guy who was a good counter puncher with a good left hook. I think Shushu's gonna get this fight done by decision. It's eight rounds. He doesn't have an extra two to four rounds to work with to put damage on him and get him out of there. Coolwell never been stopped. Pretty durable outside of the body, but I do think he's going to be able to mitigate a lot of what Shushu is going to be able to do. I just I do expect Shushu to outbox him, probably put damage on him, and then Dana to also get his respect at certain points in this fight, which is why I think it's going to go to the decision. I could see a late stoppage, but I'm more confident in the decision just because it's eight rounds. If I change my mind later in the week, follow us on social media platforms, and I'll let you know. But I'm going to go Shushu by decision here. All right, next fight we got here. And, uh, you know, a particularly interesting fight. We got Mario Barrios, El Azteca, going one-on-one -on -one with Abel Ramos. My brother, take it away. Um, we have Abel Ramos, very dangerous puncher early in fights. Very powerful hitter. The thing is, he's kind of low volume and kind of fades late in fights. Uh, Barrios coming off of some of his best wins of his career. I believe his last fight was against, no, his second, he's fought Maidana, beat Maidana. And then his biggest win was against Ugas, where they, he was dog money, made money there that night. Called that shit to a fucking T. I feel like Abel Ramos is a little out of his depth here, in my opinion. I think there's a step down in competition for Mario Barrios. Abel Ramos also doesn't have the fastest hand speed. Barrios has fought big punches before, was able to mitigate tank for a good amount of the fight before getting caught late. I don't think Abel Ramos has that ring generalship or that fight IQ to deliver a powerful blow late in the fight to get Barrios out of there. And uh, quite frankly, I just feel like this is a fight where I think Abel Ramos has an uphill battle being the slower, less technical fighter versus a guy who I think is going to cruise to probably a decision here. That's where I'll lean. I'll look at some of the late props for a stoppage because I feel like Barrios could definitely put it on him late. But I, I just have a hard time uh, seeing Ramos being able to make any big moves or put any significant damage on Barrios in this fight. Give me Mario Barrios by decision. Next fight on the card, and it's currently constituted the co-main event of this Netflix card. We got Katie Taylor going one-on-one -on -one with the real deal, Amanda Serrano. This is the run back. My brother, take it away. I love this fight. I think it's another fight that's a couple of years too late, which bothers the shit out of me. I do feel like this is a product of Eddie Hearn kind of protecting Katie. Um, Serrano has not looked the same since that fight and not because of damage, but because she's getting older and I feel like she's body. I love, I love her to death. We love her to death on this podcast. I, you can make a real argument. She's the greatest Puerto Rican fighter, male or female ever from the Island. And you know, for damn sure, win or lose, I don't know how I'm going to bet it, but I'm definitely going to be rooting for her. I'm rooting for her. Yeah. I want to see how Amanda's talking this week. I want to see how she looks physically. Because if she looks good, like, I mean, really good, I'll play her. I'll play her to win. She is the dog in this fight. I don't think Katie's knocking her out. I thought Amanda won the first fight. You could argue Katie won the first fight, but I just feel like damage has got to mean something. And there was multiple rounds where Amanda hurt her. I got I'm going to lean Katie here by decision. I don't like saying it out loud. I feel nasty saying it. Yeah, it's a little gross. But you got you to gotta be honest. I got to be honest. You got to be fair. I'm going to lean Katie by decision. Katie didn't want to sign this fight to be 12 rounds, three minute rounds. She doesn't want to fight Amanda under those circumstances, which is a little annoying. I feel like it's a little bit of a duck tactic because if you give Amanda more time to work in some of these rounds, especially these early rounds, she is fucking dangerous. I just feel like Katie's defensive boxing and the minute less than each round is going to help her in this fight. Amanda's a little older. She's slowing down, but I still would like to see Amanda at the weigh-ins to see if she and see how motivated she is for this fight. See how locked in. Yep. Katie and Eddie Hearn stalling this fight after how close the first fight was at MSG. It was the biggest woman's fight ever. I'm going to lean Katie Taylor by decision, 
But if Amanda looks good and I look like she's on a fucking special supplement plan and she looks extra motivated and she looks good, I'll play her. I, I, I just think that the skill, not the skill gap because Amanda is very good again to the body. I don't think there's any skill gap here. I just feel like Katie's going to be able to use her feet. She's very good in rematches historically. She beat Chantel Cameron in the rematch, who was a bigger girl, fights a lot like Amanda. With the same style, walks forward, goes to the body. I feel like if she can deal with Chantel Cameron, she can deal with Amanda Serrano. Give me Katie Taylor by decision, as much as I don't want to say it out loud. Now moving on to the main event at heavyweight. It looks like they have it listed here as heavyweight. We have Jake Paul, the problem child. I'm not going to call him by his adopted Puerto Rican nickname. Going one-on-one -on -one with Iron Mike Tyson, the legend, the man himself. Take it away, my brother. Yeah, so I'm... To the misfortune of many of the older viewers that watch this show, <laughs> uh, me and my brother are both there. We're both leaning Jake Paul for this fight. For, Unfortunately. For a couple of reasons. Mike Tyson, not as active as Jake. Mike Tyson, almost 60 years old. Mike Tyson had to get this fight rescheduled because of ulcers in his stomach, which is some extreme old man shit. That is some old man shit, That's some bro. old man shit. Yeah. I don't know how this fight's even being cleared. I mean, there's like a... Th Essentially, there's like a 30 year age gap difference. And again, nothing, we're not taking nothing away from Iron Mike Tyson, one of my favorite fighters ever. Yes. Fucking beast. Still, and he's still got it. You see him hit them pads. Yes. He's got the power. He's got the skill. Maybe the speed has diminished a bit. We don't know if the he chin. He still might be faster, which chin, is crazy. The chin might have diminished a bit. We, I, you have to you have to take into account the age. You have yes. to take into account that Jake Paul is 30 years younger. And has been slowly being, you know, just getting better as a boxer overall. Nowhere near Mike Tyson level of skill, but skilled enough where he can hold his own. And not get stopped or hurt significantly in this fight. Yeah. I just feel like this fight, it's going to look like an exhibition. Um, or, and there's a, listen, there's also a good chance that uh, Jake drops him, which I know is going to break a lot of your hearts. It's going to break my heart. <laughs> I just feel like, dude, like it's a 60 year old chin and Roy Jones fought him a couple of years ago. And I feel like it could look a lot like that fight where it's a lot of posturing and just movement. But I feel like Jake is not a washed Roy Jones Jr. either. He's a, he's active. He's young. He's big. He's going to look bigger than Mike in there. Yeah, he is. He's just a bigger guy. guy. Yeah. And six one. To, I mean, again, you're gonna be like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Like Mike Tyson's beat bigger guys before. This is sixty year old Mike Tyson we're talking about here. Correct. And it hurts me to say that because I think, and I'm rooting for it. I, I'm telling you, as a pure fan, when I watch this fight, I want Mike Tyson to knock this kid out. I, I love. I love him to fuck out. I love the knockdowns in this fight. I do like that, knockdowns. That's that's the bet I would play. Yeah. But if you're asking me for a clear winner, it's it's Jake. And and Jake is not stupid. Jake is another guy that has carefully crafted his career. This is a big money grab for him, but I feel like he's ready for the step up in competition considering all his previous experience. And you can't say that he doesn't have fucking skill. You just can't. It's it's a stupid argument. People thought Anderson Silva was going to beat him. You could argue he beat uh, Fury. And uh, boxing didn't want to give him Fury because... Fury is actually an amateur, legit amateur boxer. I, I just feel like, what are you expecting from Mike? I'm not worried about Mike's ability to deliver punches or his ability to cover ground. He's very fast, very powerful, very strong. I worry about his ability to take a shot in this fight. I really do. Against a kid who can knock you out on his back foot. Like, yeah, he has a very good left hand. Yeah, a very young guy good. who's been improving, who hits hard. Mike, Jake Paul hits hard, man. You got to listen. Say what you want. Early on, Jake Paul was ass. But, you know, he's committed to the sport. He's helped grow the sport. Correct. I don't think people want to give him credit because, you know, he's annoying. Amanda Serrano isn't what both she, annoying. Amanda Serrano isn't what she is without him. 100%. Without his backing. Without, without, pl platforming women, platforming Serrano in particular. Yeah, there's also another young lady on this card who fights, who she actually fights to open up the card. Her name is Shadeza Green. This chick cracks. Yes. She is a fucking good fighter. And we didn't get into it because we couldn't find a lot on her opponent. But we will cover it and we'll go through it. And you'll see it on our platforms how we're going to bet that fight as well. But he's given a lot, of, a, a lot of room for these women to wiggle and to make their money. And this is a big card. He's headlining it. 
This shit's gonna be on Netflix for free. You just gotta go onto Netflix and watch hey, this if, shit. If you got a subscription, you, you can watch the fight. Netflix is giving all these fighters big bag to get on this fucking card just to push Netflix, especially with the recent WWE purchase that they made for Monday Night Raw. I mean, dude, it's it's. I just feel like this fight can look one of two ways. Either Jake is gonna hurt him, or it's gonna be an exhibition. But I do like the knockdowns in this fight if it's juicy enough to play. Jake could definitely get knocked down from Mike. 100%. Jake can definitely knock down Mike. Like, I have no question in my mind. He's 60 years old, guys. Hate to break your hearts. The winner, if it's not a... And by the way, a draw, if the draw is juicy, might look at that too. Play that shit for sure. Play that shit. Because <laughs> boxing judges, are, if it's somewhat competitive and Jake kind of cleanly won, they're going to find a way to give Mike some a nod here. The same way they give Fury a nod. The draw looks juicy. I'd be willing to play that too. But if you're asking me, I'm going to go Jake Paul. Jake Paul to win here. Don't know how. Because if he wants to really go after him and hurt him, it depends on how Mike I, looks. I say by the decision. I'll say a decision, but yeah. it depends on how Mike looks. Like if he looks fucking slow in there, Jake might just go after him. But I feel like there might be a handshake agreement in the back to not knock each other the fuck out. Let's just yeah. make money and call it what it is. And have fun out there. It's a hard. I like the knockdowns and I like the draw. That's where I'm at. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I may not even bet it. I may not even bet it just to put it out there. And that does it for the boxing portion of our podcast. And that does it for our podcast in general. My brother, we covered a couple of fights here. We got a couple of other fights we didn't cover. But, you know, again, tune into social media. We will be covering those fights, you know, I guess from a betting perspective. Also on the UFC card, there were two fights that did fall out. One was uh, Krilov, if I remember correctly. The other one was Onama. We didn't cover them because, you know, they have no opponents. If they do have opponents... And the fight's interesting. You hear from us. Absolutely. And just to top that off, too, we also have a Abu Dhabi card uh, for boxing. That card we didn't get to because there was so much to cover this weekend. Uh, the UFC fights are relatively competitive. Some of these boxing fights are relatively competitive. That boxing card is on Saturday. This Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, uh, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight is on Friday. Just keep that noted. But the uh, Saturday card is very competitive. A lot of competitive boxing fights. Follow us on all social media platforms. We'll give you a heads up on how we're going to bet those fights as well. But until then, sorry guys if you hate us for like fading Mike Tyson here. There's a lot of MMA legends that are 60 years old. And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> me as a 33-year-old guy with a, a background, I can lamp one of them if I get a good shot on them. I'm just being 100% honest with you. I mean, there's age. There's, it's, there's it, the age, father time it, is undefeated, undefeated, my guys. Man. Yeah. So if you hate us from Mike Tyson, we I'm apologize. Sorry. I'm rooting for him. We're rooting for him. But yeah. I, I'm just being real with you. There's a lot of guys that are boxers and MMA guys that if I caught him with a good shot, I could hurt him. Especially like, at 60 years old. <laughs> and I'm 33 years old, and I don't have as much of an extensive background as those guys do. I have a decent background, but I'm just being real with you. Combat sports is a young man's sport at the end of the day. It is what it is. The young lions come for the old lions. Yes, and whether you want to fade us, hate us, or love us, like, comment, subscribe, follow Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like. It's really been helping us out lately. Don't forget to comment. We will be responding. I like to respond. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to stay up to date and also subscribe. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google podcast, you already know. Love you guys. Episode 77 in the books. Take it easy, guys. See you next week for episode 78. Holla at you guys. Love you guys. Love us. Hate us. Fade us. We don't care. Just hit that subscribe button. Holla at you. See you next week. Later.